In today's short class, we're going to take a look at some example Perl code, and we're going to write a web crawler using Perl. This is going to be just a very simple piece of code that's going to go to a website, download the raw HTML, iterate through that HTML and find the URLs, and retrieve those URLs and store them as a file. We're going to create a series of files, and in our initial iteration, we're going to choose just about 10 or so websites, just so that we get to the end and we don't download everything. If you want to play along at home, you can, of course, download as many websites as you have disk space for. So we'll choose websites at random, and what we're going to write is a series of HTML files numbered 0.html, 1.html, 2.html, and so on, and then a map file that contains the number and the original URL. So let's get started with the Perl code. So we're going to write a program called webcrawler.pl. Here's our web crawler. We're going to start, as we've done before, with what's called the shebang. That tells our uh, computer where to find Perl, so that if we make this executable, I'll show you how to do that, we can just call it directly from the command line. And then we're going to provide just a one-line description, which you should always do so you can remember what your pieces of code do. So this is going to be a simple web crawler that demonstrates using LWP simple and Perl. I'm going to start and I'm going to say use strict. This declaration means that all of my variables have to be declared. It's a very good habit to get into because if I forget to declare a variable, my code won't compile and it won't run. But more importantly, if I make a spelling mistake, my code also won't compile because that variable hasn't really been declared. Strict means that every variable has to be declared, and if I try and use a variable outside of the scope that, in which it's declared, that won't work. So I've used strict. Now I'm going to use my LWP simple Perl module. LWP simple is a standard Perl module that allows you to interact with websites. If you'd like to find out more about LWP Simple, the simplest command to run is called perldoc. perldoc LWP Simple will tell you about that simple procedural interface to LWP. Of importance to what we're going to see today, there's two methods that we're going to use. Get, which gets a URL and returns the HTML. And then get store, and get store gets a document and it stores it in the file. The appropriate arguments that we need to pass to get store are first the URL, and second the file name. So let's go back to our um, our simple web crawler code. So we've got use strict, we've got use LWP simple, and I'm going to request a URL from my users, and so I'm going to shift that from at argv. Now remember, Perl programmers are lazy, and Perl tries to do the right thing. So if I don't provide at argv, Perl thinks, oh, he must have forgotten that, he must mean at argv. So most often, we just say shift. And then if nothing is provided, this will return false. And so I can say, please provide an initial source URL. OK, so now I have a URL to go and search for. I'm just going to retrieve 10 websites in this particular trial. But maybe later on I want to say retrieve 100 or 1,000 or, or more. So let's start by getting the HTML. So my HTML 
is equal to get dollar URL. The get is already imported from LWP simple. So I have my HTML. What I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through that HTML and I'm going to identify all of the URLs that I can find and I'm going to put them in this array here. So let's say while in my HTML and I'm going to substitute the HTTP, the colon and the two slashes and then some non white space characters so one or more non white space characters and I'm gonna take that until I either receive a quotation mark or a greater than sign and those two characters are usually used to delimit URLs within HTML and I'm going to substitute those for nothing. So what this will do is it will take the first string where it finds HTTP colon then the URL and it will replace it with nothing. And then it will take the second instance of HTTP etc. And then it will take the third instance of HTTP etc. Eventually there's not going to be any more instances of HTTP in my HTML document and so this while statement will become false and nothing will happen and we'll end our while loop. Remember that if I enclose something in round brackets that gets put into the special variable $1. So I'm just going to remember that in my URLs. I want to make a directory where I can store these results so let's make a directory called web and I'm going to set some permissions on that web directory 0755 just means that I have read write access to that and I'm going to open an output file that I can store the results in and I'm just going to call it url.map and then, of course, since I've opened a file, I need to double check that it actually opened. And this is a good check to make sure that my directory was created and I still have write access to my directory. And then I need to just count my results. I'm going to loop through, there are plenty of different ways that I can loop through and get each of my elements. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to loop while i is 0 and i is less than max, my max up here is 10, and I'm going to increment i, then I'm going to get a result, I'm going to go grab that result and I'm going to save it. So let's say my source is equal to dollar URLs and I want to get an element from this array and I'm just going to get a random element. So I'm going to get an int rand and I'm going to say how many elements are there in my URLs array. Add one to that. Of course get an int so that I have an index into my array and that's my source. Then I can get and I'm going to save, remember the get store that we looked at dollar source and I'm going to save it as web dollar count dot html and then I need to print to my URL map and say URL map I have a new file it was file dollar count and it came from dollar source. And then finally I just need to increment count. Okay. When I'm done, I'm going to close my URL map file and there it is. So now when I type perl webcrawler.pl it says 
I forgot to declare the variable count. Right here, I say count is equal to zero. I forgot to say my count is equal to zero. Let's add one more thing while we're here. We're going to add an output to what's called standard error. Now, Unix file systems or Unix operating systems have two outputs, standard output and standard error. I don't want to go into the details. You can find the details in any good Unix book. But basically, I'm going to print to standard error and say that I'm getting item count from source. Okay, so let when we run when we run our web crawler, we get please provide an initial source URL at web crawler. That means everything ran successfully. So now if we say let's run it and we're going to use the New York Times website. And you can see that we've got a bunch of uh, URLs from the New York Times. When we look at the web directory, we have our HTML files, and we can open one and see that, in this case, it's an image. If we look at number one, we can see that, it, indeed, it's an HTML file. So we've built a simple web crawler that we can modify to get more information, to get data, download it from the web. And we're going to use this web crawler in our next example class where we build databases and add data to databases.